Hello, welcome into a new episode of Qi Time, the home of Qigong on UK Health Radio. I'm Clara Apollo, your host. and I'm a Qigong teacher. Uh, I'm also a Qigong practitioner and have been for many years. In fact, I, I say that Qigong saved me from myself, from my old habit patterns, from my old ways of reaching for coffee or um, alcohol. I don't need to do that anymore with my Qi practice. It's been a fascinating journey. And on this show, I do invite in a variety of guests. Sometimes they are Qigong teachers and sometimes they are energy workers, sometimes they're musicians, but we have this focus of the energy behind everything that is going on that relates to you and your vitality and for you to have a window into, oh, I hadn't considered that perspective before, or how does this feel for me? So this is all about your vitality and the ways that you can relax and kind of resource yourself and come into this place of calm when all around is frankly chaos. So on this episode, I have for you, Cynthia Harrison is here and she is an evocateur of soul who midwives the moments in birthing your new realities. She's a mystic medicine woman, an author, a speaker, a spiritual director, a mentor, an energy medicine clinical practitioner, and a medical intuitive, and a medium, and a spirit-led business mentor and intuitive entrepreneur. And she's particularly fascinated in the human condition, like behavior, focusing on the evolution of the human physically, energy energetically and spiritually. Um, so it's it's just an absolute joy to welcome Cynthia Harrison into Chi Time. Thank you. Hello. Awesome to be here. It's been a, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> been a while. Yeah. Not, not a while since I've spoken to you because we spoke recently, but uh, it's been a while since uh, I've been here. So yeah, it's yeah. really beautiful to be back in your community and uh, to see what unfolds in in this moment. Well, mm. that's right. And, you know, I'm recording this on the 16th of November in the UK and obviously the same date for you, but you're further along in the day. So it's your I'm evening. In the future. You're I'm in... always in the future. <laughs> and I say, it's OK. Come on in. Oh, OK. It's because... OK in the future. <laughs> so you're over in Australia. Mm, yeah, Where, I'm in Perth. Whereabouts in Perth? Okay. Perth, Australia. Yeah. So, yeah, many, many different time zones over here, over this side. <laughs> mm. But isn't that interesting? With time, we tend to, you know, time tries to control us, or should we say, time can be useful for us to do planning. But actually, this mm. eternally evolving now moment is expansive and when we come into this energy practice of how am I feeling with my vitality, with my with my chi, that's not a, a time piece. That's a piece of mm. experiential, isn't it? So this play that us humans have with time is, is yeah. a big one, isn't it? It's a big pressure, but also when you take your foot off that pressure, yeah. then it gives you space. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to somebody about that today. Uh, she was talking about being late. And I said, uh, you know, it's, being late it's not about controlling time it's about being in directorship of your life and if you are behind in where you need to be uh being in directorship of that and saying i am going to be in that place when i need to be at that place and what happens i mean don't take advantage of it i said to her don't take advantage of it because what happens is maybe other people are later than you which makes you on time and things like that <laughs> yes it so, happens like that doesn't it yeah yeah and uh and it's not an accident because this is how <laughs> in the job i used to have many years ago i was a trauma therapist and i had to you know go to these departmental uh you know, um, hearings and whatnot. And I'd be five minutes late mm. driving to this place. And I never stressed out. I just went, I'm going to be there when I need to be there. Yeah. The universe, you know, how I, how I'm in relationship with, uh, with all there is, yes. will, will yes. not allow me to, to not be there. And what would generally happen is that other people would be much later than me and they couldn't start, you know, 
that that's right there is there is something about the respect though. i mean running workshops mm. and, and facilitations mm. when there are times and there's other people involved you do exactly, want to be respecting exactly. other people but then yeah. again at the well, last minute and because we can keep in touch with each other on phones we can say i'm running five minutes late and that takes yeah. the pressure off it's not it's more that when it's out of feels out of your control for instance if i'm mm. working with somebody in crisis in trauma because that was my job yeah and something horrific has happened yet i need to be at a hearing that that you know a child's um where they're living is dependent on my testimony you've got these two very uh you know for those people both are as important as each other yes yes and so it's that balance of how to do both it's not about not being respectful um, because I agree I'm I'm never late you know for these types of calls and whatnot yeah. I'm always early yeah. um, so it's it's more about when it's out it feels out of I think that all of this is about the feel of it you know the experience of yeah. the pressure yes exactly of, that we put on ourselves yeah from that. yeah it's more about that uh, I yeah because I yeah this idea of riding on the chi of the moment is yes. something that's been really helping me because mm -hmm. because time is already going forwards uh can, it, when we come into this background presence of being in our back or, or sitting in our hips or this rolling mm -hmm. dantian that gives us mm -hmm. a home within ourselves to ride the energy of the momentum like and mm -hmm. I've, I've just found that super useful. It stops me from rushing forwards. Or if I find myself rushing, it's like, remember to ride yeah. this, remember to ride it, you know? And, and that's the point, I suppose, if we unpacked what I just said, it, it really is about riding that flow rather than being in traffic, knowing, you know, and going into that future space of, uh, you know that's where our anxiety starts that's where we yeah. start to get the sweat on the brow and all of that yeah. you know and yeah. you don't want to walk into um, something like that being in that state so that was just a, a way and this yeah. is years ago I haven't worked in those jobs for many years now <laughs> but uh, that's the that's some of the ways that I would keep my cool and yes. I'll just allow it to unfold knowing that what was meant to be was is is meant to be when you are in directorship of your life now yes. not everybody is okay okay so, so, so it's tuning into what that means for you then and mm -hmm. when you say that being in directorship of your life is that when you have a very congruent <clears throat> sorry when you have a very congruent connection with the earth beneath you and the heavens above you and you are that center line and you can be in your heart yeah. sovereignty well, is but, that kind of what you mean yes yeah yeah, you could say it like that. Let me put it this way, because this will link into the Spirit Whisperer series as well. So maybe this is a nice segue in there yeah. um, of why, why I'm doing that series. So if we look at the human, so I work with the, the human evolution, my background, anthropology, I'm social scientist, all of that sort of stuff. So that's sort of where I've come from, studying the human condition. Uh, and then looking at in trauma, for instance, how the trauma uh, therapies weren't cutting it. And, mm. and because I could, uh, I'm a sensitive, I can uh, I experience energy, I see, feel, sense, no taste, smell, energy. And then starting to bring that in. But because it wasn't evidence based, I wasn't uh, you know, allowed <laughs> to bring that into the those processes and so that's why i i ended up splitting away from it because the success that i had working with people children in particular mm. uh, came from working with their energetics understanding the nervous system energetically so that we could regulate their nervous system and get them to a place where we can start doing these other therapies do you okay. see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, yeah, that that soothing of the nervous system is so mm. so important. And so the next step, when I'm looking at, you know, what really, what does it really mean to be in directorship or control of your life, right? That is where we talk about the light and the dark. And I'll talk about it in this way. It's a simplistic way, but for now, you know, it, yeah, it, yeah, go for it. It's a start. So um, dark is the absence of light. Yeah. So if we're talking about our spiritual light. Uh, when we're activating at higher levels, so we talk about Kundalini or however you want to uh, language that, 
It is uh, bringing the light in to activate. So mm -hmm. your uh, energy systems, uh, there's so many more. I work with a minimum of 13. So the chakras are just one. And, and the basics of that, I work with 12, right? So it's not the mm -hmm. basic seven. Um, there's, you know, there's the minor chakras and all of that. But, uh, but when we're illuminating and bringing in the higher intelligence, they're activating to a higher intelligence. So our general human condition is, has an innate intelligence that will get you what you want, but not necessarily ethically and morally. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So, for instance, if you want money, you can get money. There are many ways to get finances. You can rob a bank. Mm. You can mug someone. Mm. You can uh, go, you know, you can um, work for it. You yeah, that's, can get that's, it that's, that's dirty way. money. We don't want do to do dirty money. Yeah, we want to do it with the, integrity. The yeah. system doesn't recognize that. It's It's... It's like um, the survival. It's going to keep you safe regardless of whether it's your, in your best interest or not. Long term. So when, okay. when you go into, so what keeps us safe? Our nervous system will keep us safe. But that may be uh, in a way that is dysfunctional long term. Ah, so classic is around the stress response, isn't it? Yes. Because that is a response yes. that's trying to keep us safe. But when yes. you're constantly in it, you're constantly in fear and anxiety and you've got all the that's cortisol right. running around. You don't get as much blood to the brain. Therefore, you're not going to mm. think clearly. So that is a, an example of fight, that. Fight, flight, freeze, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you're not supposed to be in it all death. the time. Yeah. Sorry? And these are all feigned death is another one that not many people talk about. It's... Uh, it's, uh, you know, those goats that um, freeze and then fall over when they're scared. Have you seen oh, those goats? Right. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, death, yeah. it's called feigned death or, or um, yeah, like a possum. Playing possum comes from the possums in Australia. Um, you know, oh, back in the day, they used to eat them, right? <laughs> and they would play dead mm. so that uh, the attacker would think they're dead and yeah. go away. So this is a, a, a stress response. Yeah. And humans have it too, and you can you can see it in different ways. It's not necessarily that that you know um, they're passed out, but when you, you can see when somebody's lost the spark. I call it that, oh, yeah. you know, the spark in the eye. Yeah. So there's different levels of when that divine spark tries to exit the body. So that's energetic, but it's linked to the nervous system or the, our stress response. A lot of mental health. When I look at mental health, there's a particular spark of light uh, within the heart center. And when you see where that is, it's often trying to exit out, right? And when you work with it, build that relationship and bring it back, it's quite simple to bring back. But for it to stay, it's almost like that part of yourself, that deep part of yourself does not feel safe in the body and it's wants just, to leave. It's, just gonna it's say, that spark. Yeah, yeah. It does, it's not that you die physically. It's like you look into someone's eyes and there's nothing there. I've got That's it. I've that. got this. This is the piece about why practices like Qigong help the body to feel like a safe place yeah. so that your spirit can land in it. It said that your Shen, your spirit lives in your heart. So as you were speaking, that, I was thinking, so yeah, that, a exactly. similar thing, similar thing. And yeah. I call it because how I see the energy. Um, yeah. But even, you know, working with traumatized kids, uh, teenagers that have, you know, on all the different spectrums of autism that, are, you know, have very difficult, their families found their behavior difficult, not yeah. them, their behavior. Yeah. I never see the person as their behavior. The, the behavior tells me how their energy is functioning. We, yes. we correct and align and work and nurture the energy and the person is, uh, you know, more oh, at ease and relaxed and uh, whole, right? Oh, Cynthia, this is such a good point, isn't it? It's appealing to the energy behind, which is the true person, not the behavior. I think that is really yeah. important. And, yeah. and as you were talking about trauma and, and um, fear and flight, 
uh, and that idea that our bodies they they know how to release these byproducts by shaking out shaking is a real classic thing that our bodies do and it's something that yeah. i do in pretty much every qigong a session a lot of people don't though a yeah, lot but, of people but, don't so what i'm going to suggest yeah. is that you you might not shake but do you dance yeah. do you use music do you, you get yourself out of that funk of fear and oh i get and what you're choose, saying yes yeah yeah, what, I'm, what I was getting at is that a lot of people are going into shock yeah. and not able to release because what yes. you're saying is okay. to dance, to move, to do Qigong, Tai Chi, energy, medicine, whatever you want to call it. Um, mm. Even, you know, my thing, when I'd come home from work from those stressful jobs, I'd be in the paddock weeding um weeding the yes. poisonous things because i had llamas and some of the, you know so i yeah, would be yeah. physical but you're yes. exactly right what i found is that we hold shock it's interesting we we're talking about this we didn't plan this um i did a class on this the other day that at the on the sole of the foot on the in the middle of the sole of the foot of the heel <laughs> does that make mm -hmm. sense it's mm -hmm. on the the middle of the heel on the sole, there's a point that we have a process. It's called the shock point. And you can actually um, either take your finger or a spoon or, um, you know, a crystal and push into that point. It releases shock. And if you're going into shock, you've had a car accident or, or you've cut yourself or, you know, that something's happened, you've got shocking news, you can hold that point. You can even put the the two spoons on the ground and put your heels on it and, and just bounce. gently just, press no gently just press gently press okay. and release and hold for two to ten minutes but then you can gently pulsate okay. gently pulsate and we did this the other day and one of the ladies said i just had a spinal re and i was Realign. like wow. well exactly because the, the yeah. body the body wants to release this tension yeah. we just have to find these um these portals these ways yeah. of being able to release so so when it comes to music and so cynthia harrison is here with us on <laughs> tea time um fascinating i knew it would be uh, and she's chosen a track for us so would you like to introduce it and tell us why you've chosen it, please? Well, it's called The Inner Light. And I just thought that it was so uh, connected to what you and I have been talking about and what we felt we might talk about today, uh, you know, depending where we're going. It's from the Beatles. It's, a, it's sort of one of their less known tracks, but the words are so pertinent to the work I do in helping mm. people uh, connect to you know the their conscious evolution or their development as a human for their full potential that connecting uh, within rather than you know always looking for the external so yes, yes. that's why I chose it I thought it was uh, relevant oh thank you so this is called the the inner light and it must have been penned by George Harrison we reckon it was, so. It was. And, yes. um, it's the the B side of Lady Madonna, uh, for those of you that are interested in that kind of thing. But absolutely right, spot on. Particularly the last line is so qigong. So we'll play it and come back with Cynthia Harrison after this gorgeousness from the Beatles. So you're back into Qi Time, the home of Qigong on UK Health Radio with me, Clara Apollo. And before those station messages, we heard that gorgeous track by the Beatles called The Inner Light. And you get that last line of the uh, do all without doing, which is Dao De Ching. It is, yeah, it is that the Wu Wei effortless manifesting, which actually we spoke about on the episode of Qigong with Dr. Roger Janka. And we were actually, my first question to him was, what is Wu Wei? It's not about being lazy, is it? And how interesting that the Beatles, so, well, George Harrison particularly was uh, in that whole realm of um, spiritualizing himself, em sorry, that whole realm of embodying his spirituality and finding words and then these beautiful, magical tunes to come through to help us connect with these subtler aspects of ourselves so um cynthia harrison is here with me i can't say what you are 
in particular, but I know you're a very wise woman. You've worked with many people over the years, and I know that you're fascinated by the human condition, but also how the spirit lands in the body and is able to feel safe, which is what we were just chatting about before the, the track. And that point on the heels, on the base of the heels, um, it's right. that anchoring down in the heels. It's like we do it, but if we do it with this pulse on it, I think it stimulates it and then yeah, so there's a, there's. Do you want to know a little bit more about that? Yeah, go on. In in, in the way that I see things, it's. Uh, I mean, we can do all the acupu um, acupuncture, acupressure. I've done Chinese medicine and those sorts of things, but ultimately, I come back to um, the experience of it. But this, exactly. uh, ah, let me see if I can get it right. So the heel bone is like an Oreo cookie. Okay, you've got the two cookies and the cream in the middle. It's a shock absorber. Right. And so that's why it's the shock point, because, right. you know, it is literally like a shock absorber as well. Yes. It's the cal calcaneus bone, calcaneus bone or or similar. You my Australian mm -hmm. accent sometimes ruins things. <laughs> However, uh, it's 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 about releasing and allowing, you know, if we're jumping, we can jump as well. You know, you yes. were talking about that when we were playing the song, you can jump to release, but mm. that beautiful um, pressure and then pulsing is mm. actually taken out of a full length um, energy alignment. But this is how we do energy medicine first aid, what I call energy oh. medicine first aid because I'm Great. about empowering others now. It's yes. not about me holding all the wisdom and all the, awesomeness of you know traditions and whatnot the the mystical teachings and whatnot i have for many years been looking at how can in a crisis so in a trauma situation with my clients with my family with myself you know walking down the street use this stuff to benefit our health and wellness that not say oh hang on a minute come and see me for an hour and a half yeah, session. no do it in the field we're always chatting about this with the qigong how you can yeah. make it practical for now and yes. and and in this world of crazy mayhem and chaos which is only going to get worse people you know this how can we manage ourselves how can we stay in touch with this presence of being and and, and calmness when all around is is pretty tricky mm. Well, these are some of the ways that, uh, you know, I was teaching the shock points uh, to, a, to a group of my students uh, the other day. Purely, it wasn't in the syllabus. It's not yeah, um, it what we were doing. It was just that I could, they were messaging in their Facebook group saying what they're all experiencing. And I noticed that because I, I hear them, what's called the magnetosphere. I hear uh, the tones of the different changes um, of the ionosphere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I this is how I know energy. I experience it directly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why it's a practical mystic because it's about the practicality of how do we then um, understand those sounds and the changes in the, in the earth and the planets and whatnot. This is science. It's not made up, you know, synthiorisms, <laughs> although, you know, some of those are good too. But uh, what I would notice because I worked with people for, for 30 odd years, mm -hmm. right? I would notice when I'd hear these shifts, it's like tones, a particular mm -hmm. tone, I would hear this tone and I'd observe within two days the behavior changes of people and myself. Wow. And so I started to navigate this and I, would, I was on the NASA sites, I was on the um, space weather um, sites I was, and I navigated this. It linked to the changes in the pulse of the earth, um, yes. what sometimes we call the Schumann resonance, mm -hmm. you know, it's a particular frequency, 8.73 hertz. And they, those hurts, those sounds, those tones line up with our brainwave uh, uh, frequencies. Mm -hmm. So when we're stressed, we, we're in beta brainwave yeah. state. Yeah, when we're anxious yeah. and whatnot, when we're in that flow state, which is, you know, we go into uh, Qigong or energy work or the still point, whatnot, um, we're going into alpha baseline of alpha, but then there's higher levels of alpha and then we go into gamma and, and you know, some people are theta healers. So you can link that, you could Google that, you know, yeah, uh, what yeah, all yeah. that is. But my point is that my students were telling me what's going on. And because I understand, um, you know, it's like energy medicine. I'm not a doctor, but I have done this for so long that I hear, I know what's going on in the energetics. And then I see the people around me shifting and having difficulties. Mm -hmm. So I started reteaching 
um, a class that I did just before COVID. I traveled around Australia twice in a okay. year, all the yeah. states and taught something called subliminal stress, the invisible shadow. Subliminal stress, the invisible shadow. And it was all about the geomagnetics and how all of this invisible information was impacting our stress system, our, our, our energetic mm. um, arms of the nervous system. And so that's how that shock came in again, because I noticed the people around me. And that's what you asked earlier, that how can we uh, navigate the shifts and change in our uh, external environment for our internal landscape to be, you know, uh, somewhere you want to hang out <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> not try a, a to escape place. right yeah, yeah 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 and so there's thousands of ways that we can do this um, the shock point is one because it does it releases not only current shock but old shock and that's why okay. that lady was saying she had a spine adjustment just by doing those shock points for a couple of minutes each online on one of these little calls. Oh, amazing. And I tell you what, Cynthia, do you have a little process that you could talk us through now? I do. Like I said, I had a, I had a couple, but let's do the, let's do the wisdom point. How about that? Oh yeah. Let's that's, that sounds point. good. Okay. <sighs> so, so we'll start, this is a little meditation, but it's something that you could do at any time to access your own information. So this isn't about going to guides, not that there's anything wrong with that. I teach that too, but this is about your wisdom, the wisdom point. So sit comfortably or lie. You can lay, lay down if you like, be aware of your breath. So I'm just going to take a few breaths to just connect. And as you're breathing, we're just taking our intent away from the head. So breathing in and breathing out, taking your awareness down. And we're taking our awareness or our intent from the head and the physical mind and any thoughts. And we're taking it down to this wisdom point. Now, the wisdom point is the center of rebirth and it's five centimeters above the belly button. Uh, or CV9, someone might call it. So we're taking an in-breath through the nose. And as we take our out-breath or exhale down to that wisdom point, the center of rebirth, five centimeters above the belly button. We're just keeping our awareness on that wisdom point and simply be aware of the breath. On the in-breath, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth, directing your breath to the wisdom point. Do not overthink it. It's simple awareness of the movement of the breath of each inhalation and exhalation. And you're gently and subtly now focusing on that center of rebirth. And in doing so, we're subtly working the energy muscles that provide the power to this point. So this is your gym workout for the day, your energy muscles. And now, you're going to feel into that wisdom point. You're going to feel into the point and identify with your intuitive self. So just take a moment to feel into that point, five centimeters above or a finger above the belly button. And if emotion presents, don't attach to it, feel it. So if emotion presents, feel into it. It's 
stay with the feeling and allow the intuitive self to create the natural unfolding. And this assists in a inner release of letting go of what needs to be released. So just feeling into it. Some of you may see something, some of you may feel it, some of you may get a word or an indication to something that you may have wanted to know about a situation at this point or something that you're releasing from the past. So just breathing into this process and if you do this regularly and includes identifying the feelings that surface, it's not about rushing it. We, we have little time now, but mm. you know, it's just mm. about mm. feeling into that. And as you do that regularly, you're building the muscle, your connection to your inner wisdom. So when you're ready, you can bring yourself back and just mm -hmm. allow it to naturally unfold. It's a, it's a very small process, but you can also do that at any point in time, doing the dishes, driving in the car. We'll take your fingers, just point, just hold that point. Yeah, absolutely. When I, as I'm used to dropping into the lower Dantian as my presence point. So I was feeling that as the support now for the wisdom point that felt like on the top of the Dantian, because that's usually a few, couple of fingers with down from the navel. So here we yeah, are. That's it's a not, different it, one for it. I yeah, use that in a yeah. different way. Yeah, 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 sure. But this one tapped into Ming Men and the whole Dai Mai field just rippled in a kind of a sonic kind of knowing that everything is all right. When I'm here, I'm deep in my wide myself and I've not had that experience before so thank you thank it's you it's interesting so a lot of people will get emotions so if you do get yeah, emotions come up sure. feel into it it's important not to um, push them down uh, yeah. because it is a release just yeah. like the shock point in a way yes mm. So Cynthia Harrison, the spirit whisperer, is here with us on Chi Time. And we are going to ask her a bit about this new series that she's got going on shortly. But just before we do that, I would like to bring up the topic of the power of repetition, because after listening to your uh, interview on Adrian Blackwell's show, the um, Making oh, Miracles okay. Happen, because she was on Chi Time before, you really spoke yes, so <laughs> yeah you really spoke so eloquently and clearly about the power of repetition and the importance of when we come into practices like this and we mm -hmm. we get the pathway of it going when we're in sacred space we then build up as you say these the strength and power each time you go back in it gets stronger doesn't mm -hmm. it so i wonder yeah. if you'd like to yeah elaborate a bit further on the the power of repetition I suppose the, the simplest way that I tend to talk about things because it's the practical, you yes. know, the practical side of things is that through building the muscle, you know, it's like rewiring the brain yeah. that energetically there are, um, there are the ways that the energy flows and works when there's, uh, we seem to be going into trauma uh, tonight, but so be it. Um, there's particular energies, uh, for instance, the, um, the central axis, A-X-I-S, which goes through the uh, center of the body. It's not the central core. So you might call it something different. But when there's trauma, it will go off at the heart to the right or the left. Oh, and, and that, yeah, and, um, and it's beautiful because it's like an arm supporting you. This is how I see it. It's like mm. an off. And so you see how the body has this beautiful wisdom, but yeah, over time sure. that's not um, helpful. So with repetition, the reason I'm telling you that is because I can put that into um, alignment very simply. Mm -hmm. However, if it's been out for a long time and there's chronic things going on, it will over a few days, usually three days, I usually tap, tap back in over three days and just see if it's tried to go back. 
Mm. You see what I'm saying? When somebody mm. gives you an adjustment, so mm -hmm. like a, a chiropractor or something, and you sort of um, you feel out of alignment because now you're in alignment. Yeah, it's sort of like Different that, and feeling, the body, yeah. yeah, and the body will try to get you back to what it feels um, comfortable, which may be crooked. Yeah, so this is oh. the difference between what's normal and what's natural. So yes. um, conditioning and patterning might feel normal, but it's not actually yeah. your, your natural alignment. So you're right, there's this training place in, mm -hmm. in the middle, isn't there, of trusting this new alignment? Yeah, and so maybe I'm not answering in it the way, the way that you thought that this is what's mm. come through. It's because mm. I, I understand that when something's been out for a long time and we don't have the energetic muscle, to hold the new alignment, it will naturally go back now. Our energy, our physical follows our energetic. So yes. when you align, so I say the person isn't the behavior. The, let's look at what's going on with the energetics and then see how the behavior changes. Let's mm -hmm. look at the energetics and see how the symptom changes. Oh, let's look. So repetition to me in that way is the building the repetition is building the new pathways in a way for the energetics it's like we do with trauma work we're making new uh, neural pathways through new behaviors so i just work the other end now because it's it's stronger it's more efficient right and 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 you get it to to form the pathway so that the physicality can catch up you get the energetics yes. sorted mm -hmm. i get that that's what that's why qigong has helped me so much yeah because it's yeah. given me this um, get in touch with this internal in integrity i mean i'm always work in progress you know i'm still still we all? <laughs> exploring but it's Aren't enabled my my physicality to shift and change and now you know i look at things that I, I would do normally. I used to drink coffee and, and drink wine. I can't even touch those substances anymore. My, I just yeah. don't want to. I love the yeah. smell of red wine and coffee. In fact, I'm quite happy to sniff them, but I don't yeah. want to in, intake that. My system doesn't need that, doesn't want that. It would rather yeah. that I went and bathed and bathed in, in nature, really. But it, Can it, I say something about yeah, that? Yeah, go on, go on. You know, so we can link this to the light, right? So there's research on this too but it's also what i see <laughs> that uh people with addictions they're uh, attempting to ignite or illuminate something in the brain and so there is actual research out there now on this and so when i see stuff like that i go mm, see told you <laughs> right and so when you're illuminating so you're bringing more of your higher um aspects of self into the body you know, is, is what, what I would see as, you know, uh, bringing, bring, illuminating. Mm -hmm. uh, your system won't tolerate a lot of the things that it used to because it doesn't need it anymore. It, it's already illuminating in a different way. It's already getting its needs met through, uh, you know, the movement, the um, openness, the emptying out, so more light can come in, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Often we get into these patterns because we're, innately trying to illuminate right. through substances does that make sense yeah that really does make sense i think that's going to be helpful for uh, for you listening as well sort of uh, to re reframe why you're reaching the same thing over and over again because it's an old habit pattern because you're actually you're searching for something so i'm going to suggest that the question to ask is do i really want that cup of coffee or what is it my background energy is really asking for um, mm. And can I can I give it to myself or what even? Yeah, is even that? just can drop into it? the wisdom point, Clara. Drop well, into yes. that wisdom point Thank and you. just go. Exactly. Okay, put your finger on just above the belly button. Just push yeah. your fingers in. Make connection to the wisdom point because the wisdom point is one of the three. Like you, you people talk about the three minds uh, differently. How I work with the body is merging the three minds: uh, will, love, and wisdom. This is part. This is the wisdom part. And so for higher activation, um, higher consciousness, there needs to be a merger of the three minds. So the will, love and the wisdom. So that's a little bit more of the background and why I'm getting people to uh, build a relationship with the wisdom point now. Mm -hmm. Because we always talk about the heart and the head. Yeah. When, when we need to merge the three. It's the three minds. They come together to create, you know, higher intelligence. So yeah and and to also be in in the body as well the lower dantian and the base chakra and the mm. you know the um 
the earth star so that we are grounded yeah. in that look cynthia this is totally fascinating uh, thank you i knew that it would be a very interesting discussion with you um, but do tell us more about this spirit whisperer series that you've got coming up soon and why you've decided to do it okay well we sort of touched on some of the reasons why I decided to do it. This is the third one in this series, but I started doing these uh, sort of interview or, or experiential series back in 2015. I think you might have been on one of the first ones, first or second ones back in the back then. And the reason um, I do those is because ultimately I want to introduce uh, many other practitioners and ways of knowing so that we, uh, you, we have access to to other practitioners not everybody yeah. will be drawn to me they may be drawn to you or you know we're, we're building community but the core of spirit whisperer is um, basically what we just said around uh, helping people understand that they can connect and get their own information it's no longer about going externally now sometimes we do I say that I'm like the surgeon, the energy surgeon right you wouldn't do surgery on yourself but I can teach you the first aid you know, we can we can do other ways like you would, um, you know, do for other people as well. You're, you're giving them the, the power to uh, utilize their own uh, wisdom. Um, but there are obviously other other uh, things that take more mastery uh, that, you know, you would you would go to other people. But ultimately, when we're talking about connecting to spirit, for me, there's three main levels uh, of of intuition you know, that innate gut feeling we're all born with. And there's that sort of that middle ground where we talk about, you know, psychic um, mediumship and whatnot. And then there's divine intuition, which takes a little bit more going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Because the inner it's, gym. yeah, going to the inner gym. It's, it's the, the practices like to really push that hundred kilo <laughs> above your head. Right. Yeah. Um, so we, we go to the gym and do aerobics and whatnot, you know, at this other level. So the program initially was to show that there are all of these different ways of knowing, you know, Qigong, um, mediumship, uh, you know, you know, shamanistic practices and, you know, the list goes on. We've got um, all sorts of uh, amazing people. We're even getting a, a Jedi minister, I think he says, okay. you know, because I'm looking at how to bring spirit back to spirituality, your spirit okay. back to the practices. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I love it. So that's and, the core of it. And how can people find out more about that, Cynthia? Uh, well, the the site is spiritwhisperer.online and you can jump on there and have a look. And if you feel the call uh, or any of those speakers, you know, uh, align with you, then jump on. It's free. It's completely free. Uh, Clara's on there. <laughs> we had a, a session oh, recently God. and uh, what did you took us through some Qigong? Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, because you'd asked me and said, what practices do I could, would I be um, would I like to share with people around embodying your spirituality? And I just thought of the three treasures, the upper, middle, and lower Dantian, and and doing some uh, a practice between there between the creating energy spheres and breathing into each one and it was very experiential i just thought i can chat about this awesome. or we or we yeah. can play and and then i remember you coming out of it and it was quite an in interesting experience for you wasn't it cynthia yeah yeah i mean i'm i'm really sensitive to energy and i yes. i can move my energy very simply so when i do yeah. practices it's it's like yeah <laughs> this was yeah. great yeah, Good. I enjoyed oh, it. Mm. Oh, well, thank you so oh. much. I'm looking forward to hearing the other people that you have on the series as well. And and if people want to find out more about you and what you're up to, where can they go? How can they find out more? The website's rhombushealingarts.com. So that's R-H-O-M-B-U-S, -R -R healingarts.com. Thank you. Yeah. And the Facebook is the same, Rhombus Healing Arts. So there's a lot of archives on there about different things. Okay. Um, you know, and, uh, and there is a Spirit Whisperers one. So if you want to sign up for that, um, we start in December, December 1st. And, you know, it'd probably go through December. So, you know, you don't need to listen to the whole thing. You could. But we've got, mm. you know, I think we've got 20 mm. odd speakers so far. Haroon's on there too. He's Haroon's on, on that. Well. Oh, Haroon comes yeah, in regularly. Haroon. 
every, yeah. every month we get a blast of what is what is you want to share with us now uh, and usually I've with known his stats and stuff. For, yeah for many years so yeah, he's, same, he's same. on there and uh yeah so we we cross reference cross yeah, exactly. fertilizing you we and are I, we Clara. are but this as you said this is the <laughs> this is the community that's building behind here you know we support yes. each other we we need to know where to go to have these kind of conversations not just on air to share with all of you but to for, to support each other because we're in new territory here in in this world and i think maybe one of the reasons why the the talk of the trauma has been so present in this episode of, of chi time is that i think most people are being are traumatized by the, the pandemic situation that we're in and and so how do we deal with living in long long-term trauma so i i understand and i thank you so much for for sharing your wisdom and the practical applications of of what you're suggesting too so thank you cynthia for being part of chi time that's oh, a pleasure such mm. a pleasure anytime is, is there, thank you. Is there any one last thought that you'd like to leave people with before we uh, wind this up? I think based on what we've talked about today, to remind you all that uh, you have the power to move your energy. You know, you, you have the power to impact your health and wellness in your environment, how you, you know, integrate that, whether it's through chi, uh, qigong like chi is energy so it doesn't matter what you call it prana you know uh, chi it's it's but we have the ability and that's what the series is about too so yeah. all of this is about really getting the word out that you uh, have that power you can be in sovereignty you know so beautiful just and a reminder of that it is, and there can be a softness with that. If you're weary or you just worn out, you just think, you know, I just need to stop. Well, that's your that's your soul calling you into stillness, into the resource of the of the big year, and it's the do with do all without doing. You know, that is you, your your being when you come out of doing into being. And this was actually the topic that I wanted to talk know, to Cynthia about. Come on, just a brief thing about Ring then. So Cynthia takes us a step further from doing and being okay. into Ring. A little PS well, from Cynthia in a Harrison. Nutshell, can I, I just give them, okay, so being is when you're, you're with the work and in flow, you know, the flow state rather than doing. So doing is when you're, you know, every, I think everyone understands what doing is. And we talk about being, but the being is like the rest point of eternity, right? That rest point where you gather up and continue the adventure, so to speak, in a poetic way, <laughs> you know, yes. metaphor. The aring is uh, realizing that you are all of it. So you are the children, you are the housework, you are the trees, you are everything is you. It's an aspect of, you're an aspect of that cosmic organism. So this is why Aring is a little outside of the mind. Do you get what I mean? So we can really grasp doing and being. Aring is that where we are it. Because in ancient um, teachings, there's no nouns, right? Okay. It's, it's, it's the verbing, the quality in action. So the tree is treeing, the human is humaning, the table is tabling. Do, do you get it? Mm -hmm. It's the quality in action. So nouning is taking a, a verb into action. So nouning. <laughs> but this is the ancient languages. That's It's going back to that. Um, and that we are, you know, it goes into frequency or the currents of, you know, aring is knowing that you are the current in the ocean. And, you know, we talked about time before, but it is about, you know, this, um, these, these strings or currents in the ocean that appear as a tree or appear as Cynthia or appear as the house, you know, they're the currents mm -hmm. and they're coming in and out of existence in every moment. Mm -hmm. So when you look at something and you practice viewing, which is a whole nother conversation, uh, many people over, you know, these practices, and sometimes I teach them online. So, um, you know, keep an eye out. But uh, 
you know, for free, but it's about, you know, even just closing your eyes and seeing what you see on the screen of your eyelids. And often you'll see this snow, like in the old, um, the old TVs, you'll see the, the pixelations of the particles of awareness. And eventually, if you practice viewing like that and being in that stillness, you will start to see more and more and more, you know, it becomes uh, the, the light. But when we have our eyes open and we're practiced at that, we see the pixelation and the, uh, and the dissipation of the object, the matter. So intuition is information before it becomes matter. It's data before it becomes matter. I see information before it becomes matter. When I look at somebody uh, in a particular way, I see the pixelations of them coming in and out of existence at every moment. So when we talk mm. about time and what's real and what's not real, I say relative reality <laughs> because mm. it's dependent on, you know, seeing or perceiving. It's, it's for me, it's about the perception and the way to view from multiple uh angles directions planes yeah. whatever you you know wherever you're at uh, yeah. so now uh, so ring is you know a topic all on its own but in a nutshell it's it, it links to everything we've been talking about oh, perfect way to wind up this episode of chew time <laughs> thank you cynthia thank you thank you have, um, have a, yeah i really love what you're doing and i'm looking forward to this spirit whisperer series see what else we can unearth and share with one another so i look forward to seeing you on there and 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 yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you all for watching if you're here on youtube thank you so much do remember to subscribe if you want to stay informed with who we've got coming up next because yeah i've got a list long as my arm that i'm going to share with you over the next little while it's, it's all about support supporting you as we were just talking about with cynthia to come into the, your your empowerment you have a right to choose what is right for your system whatever that is Absolutely. and to be supported in that that choice and to get to know who you really are because yeah who you really are is a, as a unique being as a fragment of the divine is special you are unique so um just breathe that into your heart and own that aspect of yourself that is precious and uh mm. oh, keep your chi up and if you want to listen to this on podcast, you, any all the podcast platforms, Clara Polo's Chi Time or UK Health Radio, we're here on demand as well. We will be back again very soon with more similar but not quite the same. So take take care of your lovely selves and see you next time. <laughs> Blessings. Blessings. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you. <laughs>